And now, Decoder Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Riddle of the Sphinx. Check the tenth floor, Malloy. Make sure the labs are locked up tight, Malloy. The boss isn't paying you to play tiddlywinks, Malloy. Boy. I wish he'd lighten up. Three years as a night watchman, I've never even seen the boss. What does he care from a few tiddlywinks? See, what a surprise. Everything quiet, just like always. Light switch isn't working. Well, what of it? I'm not the maintenance man. Let him deal with it in the morning. What is that? Came from the main lab down the hall, and... There's a light under the door? Strange. I don't remember anyone working this late before. Maybe Professor Bellamy himself. I'd better check. What's going on here? The door's locked from the outside? But I'm sure there's somebody in there. Hello? Uh, Professor Bellamy? Anybody there? (gasps) What the? You there, stop! I said stop. Stop where you are. Get back, I'm warning you... No! Please! Ah! Bellamy! I say, Bellamy, there you are. I was beginning to feel decidedly stood up. What's that? Oh, I beg your pardon, old boy. Sorry to keep you waiting. Think nothing of it. When it comes to foundation business, I can be surprisingly patient. Foundation? Yes, the City Father's Benevolent Foundation... You might recall the annual fundraising drive was something of the pretext for the lavish dinner at my club I'm supposed to be buttering you up with just now. Good heavens, man, you seem terribly preoccupied. Hmm? Oh, yes, I suppose I am. I'm awfully sorry. Perhaps I should have postponed this evening to a more appropriate time. Oh, my. Dinner at the Club Macaw is not something postponed lightly. Uh, No, nothing for me just now, thank you, but the professor looks like he could use a drink before dinner. What's that? Oh, yes, scotch and soda, please. See here, old man. Suppose you get it off your chest. No, I... Well, I suppose it'll be in all the papers soon enough. I suppose it's only right that I tell you myself. Papers? This sounds serious. I'm afraid it is. I've had something of a run of bad luck, old friend, and I'm afraid I'm not very good company as a result. What sort of bad luck? Well, it started off innocently enough. Indeed, it seemed at first to be a wholly marvelous turn of events. You see, early this week, I was contacted by an estate lawyer here in town named Shawson. He revealed to me that Bellamy Labs was the beneficiary of a remarkable endowment from an anonymous donor. An enormous sapphire of great beauty, cut with such artistry and yet such mathematical precision, it was quite unlike anything I had ever seen before. Remarkable indeed. Did he give any reason for this gift? No, no. The terms of his client's will forbade him to reveal any more than that it came from the estate of an elderly man whose granddaughter's life had been saved by the work done at our company. Well, such gifts have been given in the past, though none as generous as this. Hmm, is the stone very valuable? Almost without compare. I have no doubt that it would have fetched an amount so great as to endow an entirely new facility for our medical division, saved untold more lives in honor of our secret benefactor. I had such great plans. I set about arranging insurance, an auction. I put the stone in the safe in my private lab. Bellamy, are you telling me the stone was stolen? Yes, just last night. But I'm afraid it gets much worse. A night watchman, Ralph Malloy, was killed during the robbery. Murder as well. Was Malloy shot? No, he was... I can't explain it. But when he was found, he was almost petrified. Dried out almost like a mummy. No one entered the building before or exited after. One of the other guards would have seen them. 
My lab is on the tenth floor. The windows were locked from the inside. The watchman's key was in the lock, suggesting it was he who opened the laboratory door. And I'm afraid it gets still worse. Worse? How? I put the gem in my laboratory safe because it was the most secure place I could imagine. That safe is one of the most advanced available. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing of value held there. The safe also contained the formula for a remarkable new alloy we've been testing. An alloy with a tensile strength 20 times that of steel and completely non-conductive, not just of electricity, but extremities of heat and cold as well. Quite possibly the most perfect shielding yet developed. Are there military applications? Oh my, yes. We had been reluctant to release the research for just that very reason. We were to have demonstrated the alloy's capabilities for representatives of the government next month. I shudder to think to what fell purposes an unfriendly power might put it if it should find its way into their hands. You've called the police, I imagine. Yes, yes. They tried to make encouraging noises, but I can tell they're baffled. Frankly, so am I. I can only pray that the thief took everything in the safe in a panic and doesn't realize that the formula could be a hundred times more valuable than Sapphire itself. I dread to think what might follow otherwise. Indeed. Look, old man, perhaps you're right. Perhaps this isn't the best time for this. Why don't you head home and get some rest? And you and I can put off our business until another day. Thank you, my friend. I I appreciate that. I'm sorry to run out on you. Not at all. I'm sure I'll find a way to occupy myself. To the lair and quick. How was dinner? No time for that. This is business. Oh, and you got all dressed up and everything. This really isn't the best time, Kit. Yes, boss. Somewhere out there is a murderer. An expert thief and safecracker with a priceless jewel, a dangerous secret formula, and a weapon the likes of which the city has never seen. No time for the millionaire playboy routine. The city needs the red panda. Yes, boss. Kit? Uh, yes, boss? This isn't the way to the lair. Yes, boss. We're going straight to the Bellamy Labs. How did you... It's been all over the police band radio. Why didn't you come get me? The sapphire wasn't going to get any less stolen. And you need to eat. You're my driver, not my mother. You need both. There's a sandwich in the secret compartment with your spare costume. I'm already wearing mine under my uniform so you can't peek. Kit Baxter... Behave yourself! <laughs> yes, boss. Quickly, Kit. We've got to reach the professor's personal laboratory before someone sees us. Ixnay on the it K? I'm in uniform. Sorry. I'm not used to this new arrangement yet. You're not used to it. We're climbing up the outside of a building. More walking than climbing. You say potato. Hey. Mind telling me why we couldn't take the stairs? Because the place is teeming with Toronto's finest. Better late than never. Besides, it's a perfect opportunity to test the new static shoes. Jeez, shoes that hold you to the side of a building when the power is static electricity. Hey, you ever wonder how much money you can make with all these gizmos, boss? Compared with what I already have, hardly seems worth the trouble. Besides, this way is more fun. Ah, here's the window. Do you want to have a go, or shall I? I'll do it. I'm almost there. You don't need to walk so gingerly. The shoes will hold you up. Uh, and if they don't? Well, you do have those handy retractable gliding membranes on your costume. Let's test one thing at a time, shall we? You're going to have to try them sooner or later. Otherwise, we'll stop calling you the flying squirrel and start calling you the silly girl in a squirrel suit. I thought you liked the suit. I do. Unlock the window. You said it was very flattering, you said. It is. I do... I said you were silly, not the suit. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Unlock the window. Well, hey! Unlock the window! All right already. Wait. Yes? Red Panda, look at this lock. Yes? I'd swear no one's ever tried to jimmy this lock before. Right first try, which means... Our killer didn't come in through the window, either. Full marks for deductive reasoning. And for the window lock? Eight out of ten. Eight? Come on. There's the safe. I'll check for prints. You'll need to be extra careful. Chief O'Malley's men have been all over this place and didn't find a thing. Maybe I can turn up something they missed. You check the safe. Yes, boss. Why did I agree to this arrangement again? 
Because I figured out your secret and blackmailed you into letting me play. Ah, uh, yes. I knew there was something. Huh. Look at this. What? This safe door is in absolutely pristine condition. To disturb a modern safe like this without dynamite, our man must be a master at the fine art of burglary. Or someone who knew the combination. What are you suggesting? Just formulating alternate theories of the crime. Lesson four. Hmm. Good girl. For the moment, let's stick to the known. Find anything? Must have worn gloves. I figured as much. Gloves that he took off only to search the very back of the safe to make sure he had everything. Found a thumb and index finger big as life. Lesson 36. Nice job, flying squirrel. Ah, shucks. Of course, that means our killer wasn't just after the sapphire. He was after the formula that was in that safe. We've got to find him before he can sell it to a foreign power. Well, that's another thing, Red Panda. How did the thief know where the jewel was? Well, the professor only got it a couple days ago. I'd like to know the answer to that, too. First things first. A trip to the morgue to examine the remains of our unfortunate security guard. Then a lawyer named Shawson is going to receive an unexpected visit. From the Red Panda. <laughs> Come on, you've got to get out of here before anyone comes in. The head coroner is a friend of Chief O'Malley's, and O'Malley's got it in for the Red Panda bad. I could get in real trouble. You've been in real trouble before, though, haven't you, Bert? Haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have. Come on, he's in here. Here's the report. Who's the skirt? The name's the Flying Squirrel. And if you can't tell the difference between tights and a skirt, you need to get out of the morgue more often. You seem like a nice kid. Uh, a word of advice. If you're going to keep hanging around with the big guy, don't let him save your life. <laughs> Too late. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Take it from me. Once he's got his hooks in, he'll never let you get away. <laughs> that was kind of the idea. Uh, what's that? I said, where's Malloy's body? Uh, right here. <gasps> oh, my! Amazing. The coroner's report says the body was discovered as a dried-out husk. I noticed. Mm, the report says were it not for positive identification from dental records, they would have thought it was an unwrapped Egyptian mummy. Are you uh, planning on seeing the show or just reading the reviews? Hmm? Oh, my. That's what I said. I've never seen anything like this. Squirrel. Look at this mark on the man's forehead. Yeah, we don't know what that was either. It almost looks like the focal point of whatever energy did this to him. That's exactly what it is. It looks like a burn. A small burn in the shape of... Well, it looks almost like a cross with a handle on the top. That's called an ankh. It's an ancient Egyptian symbol of great power. We need to know more about what we're dealing with. Squirrel, you head over to the museum. Unless I miss my guess, Dr. Chronopolis should still be there. He's the country's foremost expert on ancient Egypt, among many other things. I'm a bit late for social calls. Dr. Chronopolis keeps unusual hours. Well, where will you be? I'll be disturbing the beauty sleep of a certain estate lawyer. Get going. I'll contact you on the wireless set in the car. Right, Red Panda. Till next time, Bert. Thanks again. Yeah, don't mention it. To anyone. <laughs> You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Emil Shawson. Mm. Wake up, Emil Shawson. <clears throat> what? Hello? Is anybody there? Strangely. I could have sworn I heard someone. Yeah, it must have been a dream. This is no dream, Shawson. Who's there? Who are you? I'll ask the questions here. What do you want? How did you get in here? Neither lock nor key can keep out the Red Panda. The Red Panda? No, it can't be. That's just a myth, a story. Then perhaps this is just a dream after all. When you've told me what I want to know, it can all be over. What do you want? The Bellamy Sapphire. I want to know who your client was. Who bequeathed the Sapphire to the professor? I can't tell you that. Yet you must. I can't. It's a sacred trust between an attorney and his client. <laughs> I, I can't tell you anything. I, I won't. You're lying, Shawson. 
You aren't nearly that noble. You may not be up to your neck in this just yet, but there are lives hanging in the balance. Untold numbers of lives that may be added to that already lost if you keep silent. I cannot allow that. Please. Please. He'll kill me. M my family. Who will? Who threatened you? No. No one. I'll tell you nothing. I know my rights. I am not a policeman, Mr. Shawson. And as you listen to the sound of my voice, you will find it is quite impossible to resist. <laughs> no. Yes, Emil Shawson. Into the dark of night comes the searching light of truth, the light of justice. It has settled on you, Emil Shawson. Tell me who gave you the jewel. Don't. No. His name. You're lying. No. No. He called himself the Sphinx. The Sphinx? He came to me, demanded that I give the stone to Bellamy Labs, promised me money. And he double-crossed you, threatened to kill you. Yes. Told me this was just the beginning. Gave me the stone back tonight. Told me when he had the other one back, he would pull the same caper all over again. I refused. That's when he threatened me. The other one? Other stone? Are there two sapphires, Shawson? Yes. Two. Who was the other one bequeathed to? Tell me. V v Valeria. Valeria? As in Valeria Chemical? The largest experimental chemical firm in all of Canada? Yes. No telling what this sphinx is after there. Got to act quickly. Return to sleep, Emil Shawson. You will remember none of this. But in future, when you choose to act outside the honest boundaries of your profession, to risk acting as an unwitting pawn of evil, you will know deep in your heart that I will be watching you, Emil Shawson. The Red Panda will be watching! <laughs> Quite sure that's all you can tell me, Dr. Chronopolis. I'm sorry, Flying Squirrel, but I don't know of any instrument, e Egyptian or otherwise, that could produce the kind of effect you're talking about. It's simply unheard of. Oh, gosh. Well, that was solid lead. I don't know how we'll ever recover that stolen formula. I'm to say nothing of the sapphire. Did you say sapphire? Yes. A large and very valuable sapphire was stolen from the safe at Bellamy Labs as well as a formula for the new alloy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Safes? Sapphires? Onks? What is it? What's wrong? Oh, my. I should have put it all together before. I'm afraid I'm not quite as clear-headed as I used to be, child. The spirit is willing, but the mind is cluttered. Doc, Doc, please. Just take a deep breath and spill it. Six months ago, there was a break in here at the museum. The director's safe was opened by a master safecracker who stole several newly discovered artifacts found in a crypt in the desert outside Cairo. Mm, let me guess. A sapphire? Two sapphires, my dear. Two sapphires of equal size and shape, each cut with a level of precision unknown in the ancient world. There was also an amulet with a smaller stone cut in an identical pattern and a golden onk some fourteen inches long. The items tested very strongly for mystical energies, but before I could complete my studies, they were taken. Oh, but Doc, why didn't you call in the Red Panda? He's helped you before. I know, my dear, but the director was most insistent that a proper police report be filed for insurance purposes. The chief of police... Um, oh, Mally. Th that's the one, yes, yes. He seemed convinced that the Red Panda actually commits more crimes than he solves. Oh, Dr. Chronopolis, you know that's not true. Yes, yes, my dear. But the museum board and the insurance company were most eager to avoid any publicity. I take it the artifacts were never recovered. Oh, 
My, no. The insurance company's investigator did deduce the identity of the culprit, however. Now, where is that file? Ah, <laughs> yes. Hmm. Mike Murtock, career camp burglar. Huh. Nasty-looking customer. Indeed. Alas, the investigator was never able to find him, and in time the insurance company gave up looking. It was as if he dropped off the face of the earth. He might have learned to harness the mystical energies of the artifacts he stole and twisted them for evil purposes. Including making them a part of his safe-cracking ammo. Well, if the fingerprints in this file match the ones I found in the safe, we'll know for sure. Can I borrow this, Doc? Oh, of course, my dear. If the two crimes are related, if there's even a chance to recover the artifacts so they may be studied... I promise we'll try, Dr. C. Thanks again. Ah! The materialization worked perfectly. This must be the secure room at Valaria Chemical. The amulet would have brought me to within ten feet of the sapphire's location, which means the vault must be right. Aha. My, she is a beauty. Fortunately, I don't need any ancient Egyptian artifacts to get me past this lock. Just a little. Perfect. My precious sapphire sitting here amongst the secrets of Olaria Chemicals. When I add these discoveries to the Bellamy alloy and the other secrets I'll steal before the police get wise to this scheme, I can live like a king! A king! <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's there? I know that laugh. And I know a good joke when I see one, Murtaugh. The Red Panda! No matter how often it happens, there's still nothing better than hearing them shriek your name in terror. Not this time, you masked menace! The Mike Murdoch you sent to prison is ancient history! Now there is only... The Sphinx! <laughs> the Sphinx, huh? These days every punk with a cloak and a necklace thinks he's got what it takes to be a supervillain. It's not a necklace! It's an amulet! Of course it is. Shut up! You've got no idea the power I have now, Red Panda! This amulet is joined to its sister stones by powers you couldn't possibly understand. Powers which pull the wearer of the amulet through the ether, past the guards, and into the very heart of this country's most secure secret labs. The power of the gods, combined with my own modest gifts, to make an unstoppable fellow of felony! Murtaugh, you fool. You've come into possession of some of the most powerful artifacts in the world, and you use them to sneak past security guards. I've had enough of your lip. The stones aren't the only treats I've discovered. You mean stole. Possession is nine-tenths of discovery. Say hello to the Ankh of Sutek. It has the power to mummify living flesh at an instant. You can't possibly use such a device, Murtaugh. You know in your heart it doesn't work. And it's becoming so very heavy. You can't hypnotize me, Red Panda. <laughs> Prepare to meet your ancestors. Ah! Oh, the beam reflected back at me. Shot the yank right out of my hand. <laughs> but how? So I can't hypnotize you, eh, Sphinx? That wasn't me you aimed your device at. It was your own reflection in this mirror. You merely saw it as me. Very clever. You've overplayed your hand, Red Panda. What the? Bad luck, Sphinxy. You've had your nose in old books too long. Next time you'll keep your eyes peeled for the flying squirrel. I've got your old unk, so keep your hands where I can see them. Nice gliding squirrel. You like? I do. Thanks. I'd call that a successful test. Oh, right. Test. Wish I could stick around, but I've really got to run. What the? The amulet brought me back here! <laughs> Sorry, Sphinxy. Did we forget to mention both gems were in this room? With one in the safe and the stone you returned to Shawson in my pocket, your amulet will always bring you here, regardless of which stone you try to reach. Ah, uh, think you're pretty smart, don't you? Well, try this on! <laughs> Red Panda, are you hurt? Oh, get him! No, let him go. We have the stones and the onk. You've got to get them to the museum for safekeeping right away. Hurry! <laughs> well, that went pretty well. Hi! Hey, well, you're not hurt at all. Disappointed? You'd better have a good explanation for this. For what? For making me think... Well, I... Well, 
For starters, the Sphinx heard you say you were taking the artifacts to the museum. Aren't you worried he'll try to get them back? Kit, I'm absolutely counting on it. Come on! Oh my. Such remarkable items, such perfect condition. Such a shame the amulet was lost. But one mustn't complain. Oh. Oh my goodness! Not goodness exactly, my dear Dr. Chronopolis. I see that meddlesome girl has left the sapphires in the Ankh with you and gone to get help for her mentor. My amulet has brought me right to them. I'll just relieve you of them and be on my way. No, you can't. You can't do this. <laughs> oh, no. Why not? No! Oh, oh. Because you're hanging upside down in a pandanet. That's why not. Good work, Squirrel. Can you get his amulet, Professor? Got it. Now he's powerless. Curse you, Red Panda! Yes, yes. Curse me. <laughs> I've heard it before. But, boss, why don't we just nab him back at the labs? Because he didn't have the Bellamy Alloy formula with him, and we didn't know where his hideout was. With me supposedly shot and you trying to help me, the Sphinx could count on a short window to recover the remaining artifacts and make his escape. I knew if we gave him the opportunity, he'd collect the formula and come straight here. And you're right. Here's the formula right here. We'd better get this back to Professor Bellamy right away. Soon, Flying Squirrel. We've got one stop to make on the way. What's that? Breakfast. It's been a long night on just a sandwich. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 1, Riddle of the Sphinx, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Scott Moyle, Stephen Burley, Jonathan Lear, Peter Nickel, M. John Kennedy, Clarissa Jeanette Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.